This is the Spangler Proton Pack, and these are some screwdrivers. Basic hand tools, and this is all you need to do the best mod for the Spangler Proton Pack. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to another very special episode of Peace, Love & Guns. My name is Will and today we are taking a look at the Spangler's Proton Pack from Hasbro HasLab. I've already done an unboxing review and a discussion of potential mods that I'm going to do this thing. There's already a whole lot of activity on the Facebook groups and forums about what people are doing to make this look more accurate to the movie or to make it look like the 1984 film packs. And I've already gone and taken the liberty of um, doing some custom modifications. Uh, I did this to my spirit pack and I rather like having the uh, cyclotron bumper have a nice piece of caution tape there. This one is reflective and I just think it adds a little pizzazz and uh, it's a no touchy. The proton pack is not a toy as you know. So uh, here we have my Spangler proton pack with my Spangler wand. We've got it all attached to set up. If you want to know how to set it up, or hear my uh, initial musings, or see the unboxing and the packaging and all that good stuff, you can check out my other video. It'll probably be right there. And uh, if it's not, it'll be right there. So check that out. Uh, it's a, a long format video and we just kind of go through it. I don't spend too much time playing with packaging, but uh, we go uh, into it and we put it all together and uh, boot it up for the first time. Now, if you're like me, uh, you've noticed some uh, failings of Hasbro HasLab. Uh, that's a harsh uh, term. This pack costs 400 bucks plus the wand, which is another 100 bucks. Uh, they are not available anymore because it was a crowdfunded project. But um, for what they did, it's amazing for the price. It's a full-size pack. It's rather heavy to about 15 pounds. I think that's without the wand, uh, perhaps even without batteries and certainly without uh, the uh, LC1 Alice frame that goes with it. Uh, but that said, uh, there's a few things that people really like to change out on this that we're seeing. And one of the things that bothers me personally that I haven't seen a lot discussed is this mod that we're going to talk about today, the Cyclotron LED mod. So what you notice with the pack in its current configuration when it comes from factory is you can really tell that those are LEDs cycling around in there. Each one of the the lights on the cyclotron has three leds in it and because of the ghostbusters afterlife film uh, you see the kind of particles swirling around on the inside of the cyclotron and um, they try and replicate that with a total of 12 leds so three on each of these four cyclotron lights and they blink on in sequence and spin around and that is a cool effect and i like that they've kind of made that chasing ring to uh to, to emulate the afterlife pack. However, it's very obvious that it's LEDs. And like I've done with my spirit packs, and I, it's kind of a something that jumps out to me uh, on custom packs is when you can tell that the lights on the inside of the pack are LEDs. The original films used halogens. I don't personally care where the light comes from. If you're a purist, you might build a completely 100% screen accurate pack and use the bulbs that they used back in 1984. Uh, but uh, I would settle for some LEDs that just illuminate a diffuse piece of plastic right here and, uh, you know, not have to change bulbs out and, and have the additional draw on battery. Uh, it's probably negligible if you're you know, a super collector, super fan. Um, but for the purpose of this pack, uh, it just leaves a little bit to be desired. The fact that you can see those LEDs blinking on it kind of reminds me of uh, that, that Chuck E. Cheese game where you hit the button and you try and time it. Those are all a scam, by the way, because... Uh, you can perfectly time that button and you'll only get it like 20% uh, of the time or something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty shameful. Anyway, um, so the fact that you can see the individual LEDs bothers me. And um, I think that this, this mod is the best mod that you can do to make your proton pack look more like the movie and at the same time be more like the uh, 1984 film. And uh, at the same time, it is a free mod. Uh, all you need are two tools. You need a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver. Now this mod might scare some folks, uh, but I'm gonna take you through it and show you how to do it. So let's get into this. Take this off the stand. Very robust. We'll go ahead and put the stand aside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the bracket on the cyclotron. 
take that guy off right there slide that off and fold this up now you'll notice that uh, my CRT emitters and the little reflectors I've taken those off you do not need to do that I did that because I wanted to see what's under there and because I want to paint those uh, so that uh, perhaps they have a little bit of metallic or weathering uh, I'll probably also go around and uh, paint the little ribbon cable that you see on the inside um, there I've removed that as well you do not see it that's why you see those little squares uh, but I've taken this thing down and I figured out the only way to get at those LEDs is the way that I'm going to show you right now now you will see immediately that you have three screws you've got one screw there one screw there and one screw down inside the infilter so we're going to go ahead and remove those I'll try and stay out of your way. Screw number one. Screw number two. And screw number three. It's just inside the infilter center hole. All right, those three screws allow you to remove the infilter from its casement, or rather uh, kind of its connection with this piece. I'm almost certain that that's required, uh, but that's the, the least difficult to get your head around. Uh, is removing those three screws, but uh, I think taking that out is required. Um, you'll notice that these parts are flexible, uh, but this piece doesn't come up. There are no other screws here that hold this down. This piece is actually glued in place, and I will show you what you need to do to get it off. That's where your other screwdriver comes in, your flathead screwdriver. You're going to wedge it in between the outer cyclotron case and the inner cyclotron case. And that's going to look a little something like this. Just kind of give yourself some wiggle room and you're going to find a spot that that wants to go in. You can kind of lift up on these parts right here and you can kind of wedge it and you're going to go along like this. Get that in there. You get one screwdriver in. There's nothing on the inside that you're going to poke or prod or rip out on accident. Get that second screwdriver in and just very gently go along. You'll hear it popping one by one and you just go along until the whole piece has come off. Take it slow, be easy, don't be afraid, it can sense the fear. But once you've done that, this is what you're left with. Pretty cool how the outside casement doesn't have any real wires connected to it. You could have disconnected those if you want to. You'll see that your infilter is completely removable now at that point, and you are able to see the plastic windows for the outside of the cyclotron. Try and keep those clean and fingerprint free. Um, I can actually feel the static right there, so they will collect dust as you do this. So you might take a little uh, lint-free cloth and, and wipe them down. Um, but this is what you get once you remove that, except for one piece that, that I've already removed on mine, and that is this guy. These are little plastic diffusers that come set, uh, stock set into the cyclotron LED uh, bits like this here and uh, they don't do a great job. If we hold this part up to this, you can see the difference in the stock with that diffuser, and then without the diffuser completely, you can actually see the LEDs without them being on. Um, but it's kind of cool that you have some depth between the red glass plate or the red plastic, that white plastic diffuser, and then you don't see the LEDs unless it's on. You really see those LEDs spinning when it's on. So the mod that I've come up with is a, a very simple one. For now, I might refine it later. Get out of here, guy. But you take this off, you take your good old fashioned flathead screwdriver. You could probably use a pick that might be a little bit nicer. I used my flathead, you could use a pick demonstrate that for you you want to be careful that you don't get under there and then scratch across that pcb or break your leds off or break these wires but there's really a lot of room to work with in there just get underneath that and flip it up and out it's gone i don't know where it went and i don't care because it doesn't do a good job it's bad and it should feel bad for that so this is what we're going to do we're going to put a diffuser right up against these plastic plates and what I came up with is very cheap, but it's effective. It's a sheet of paper that I've cut out to this shape. There's a hole so that you can't see any paper. 
through the hole that you put the bolt to, to keep the cyclotron plate on. We're gonna put that piece of paper down. It goes one way for me. I'm gonna get my in filter back. In filter goes back on. I'm just gonna double check and make sure I don't have any lint or anything on the front of that paper wedged between the, the red plastic and then the paper. And then we put this back on. Depending upon how accurately you cut your paper, um, you may need to kind of push it so that the screw uh, pegs go through the uh, little screw peg recipient holes. Just kind of weeble wobble it till you get it. It only goes on one way. Oh, I meant to show you guys. I meant to show the lords and the ladies and everybody else. Uh, this is actually what you're breaking when you go along with your screwdriver you are breaking these little uh, tines. Those are glued in to the bottom cyclotron piece or the front cover from here. And they would have been little pegs that would have been stuck through and glued in. And those are no longer there. It is not a problem. This thing gets uh, smushed together and um, it doesn't matter that they're not glued anymore. Take it from me. So we're gonna get that back on there. I could turn this upside down and shake it and it's not coming out, but at the same time, it's there's, there's nothing really uh, gonna be holding it tight with the exception of the screws that hold the in filter on. I believe they put, the screws are different here. So there are two screws that are the same. They're slightly smaller than the third screw and they go on the outside of the in filter here. We'll just go finger snug. And then the third bigger one, I know you did not fall into the pack. Wow, that's super cool. Okay, so super fun fact, behind the ribbon cable where uh, these three cables go into the pack, there is a hole that goes straight into the shell. And uh, my third screw for the in-filter just went down there and it's not coming out until I open the whole pack up, which I don't feel like doing tonight. But um, this thing is plenty solid. You do notice that the uh, there's less depth to these uh, lenses, which to me is fine. Uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, but what you do get with these is you do not have the, it looks directly like there's an LED there uh, kind of view. There we go, make it look pretty. All right, from here we just put it down. That was much ado about something that's very simple. Okay, time for the finished product of our labor. Go ahead and switch me on. I have it in 1984 mode. Um, the camera appears to be picking up pretty well. Um, since there are three LEDs in 1984 mode, you do still have um, three LEDs lighting up on each one. Um, there are folks that have modified that so that only one LED comes on. And I think that that's fine, except that one LED is not particularly bright and in other people's builds, they do sometimes still look like it's an LED. Um, the camera appears to be picking up, uh, you know, kind of uh, that, that semicircular ring that it's three LEDs in there. But by the naked eye, it really looks a lot more diffuse to the naked eye and a lot closer. I want to experiment with different materials, perhaps a plastic with kind of a high index of refraction, uh, like, a, like a fiber optic cable would be, um, and uh, something that'll carry that glow throughout a material. And I think also having that material further away from the LEDs is resulting in um, more diffuse light hitting the whole thing rather than it kind of going through a thick piece of plastic right in front of the LED and then still just locally illuminating those three LEDs. Uh, let's take a look at what this looks like in the uh, afterlife. Since seeing afterlife, uh, the afterlife mode has really grown on me. 
and it's just got a little bit more pizzazz than the 84 mode. Um, so let's take a look at that. I'll switch her off. And undo the cyclotron here. Take off our safety bumper, flip this bad boy up, and then flip our 84 switch. And we'll flip her back down. Again, don't get this too tight. Um, when you spin this, it's actually tightening into the nut that's on the front of the, uh, the cyclotron spinamajig that's in there. And that itself spins and tightens onto the post that's in there. So I feel like uh, you may become unlucky if you tighten that too much, you'll pull one thing through the other. So don't do that. Uh, but let's turn on the uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife mode. And again, it is more diffuse, but for me, I like that because it gives you this uh, effect that perhaps there's particles and they're spinning around and uh, it's destabilized over the course of 30 years. You know, it's not perfect. And I'd kind of like to know in the comments what you would experiment with as far as a material for a, a better diffuser than a sheet of printer paper. And uh, I'll like to try that out. Let's turn the lights off here, dim the lights a little bit and see what it looks like. And I'll switch it back to 1984 mode so that you can see. That's very dark. All right. That's afterlife with no lights. I'll bring the house lights up here just a little bit. Oops. Okay. I guess I gotta have some kind of lights on. There we go. All right, go into spooky mode here. Afterlife. So notice you're not seeing individual LEDs. It's more diffuse and it's giving you. All right, sorry about that. The battery ran out. So let's re-engage spooky mode. We got the light on low and uh, it's very romantic in here. Go ahead and hit the pack. We are on afterlife mode, low light with the diffuser. And just look how gorgeous that is. I'll tilt the pack for you to see it some better. I think it looks amazing. Now, interestingly, uh, I diffused these, but I'm actually going to be modding the bar graph so that it's less diffused, and you can actually see the individual LEDs better. So, be looking off of that video. Now, let's go ahead and switch to the to four mode and show you the diffuse lighting with the light. Switch in here. Here we go. All right, 1984. Here we go. You tell me that doesn't look a million times better. And you know how much it costs? Zero. A pair of screwdrivers, a little bit of time, patience, and the willingness to break some glue lines on your pack, and uh, you've got just the best mod that you can do for zero dollars on your Hasbro HasLab Spangler Proton Pack. Guys, if you like this sort of content, do make sure to comment, like, subscribe, share the video if you really enjoy it. We now have uh, super likes and super thanks enabled, so you can throw a couple of bucks my way. Uh-oh, here it goes. That's interesting that they decided to put that in. I think that's a little bit on the cheesy side. So, uh, 1984 pack mode, there's a ghost sound that, that happens sometimes. Weird. Um, for cosplay, it's, it's kind of awkward. Like, you like to be able to trigger that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, we also have a Patreon. If you want to help support the channel monetarily and uh, pledge an amount monthly, uh, I am going to start uploading all videos to Patreon so that you can watch them without any ads and uh, support the channel directly. I want to say thank you for watching. Make sure to be good to yourself, love your neighbor, and stay safe out there. Peace.